I'm here with Helene from. Can I have my pencil? <laughs> like the pencil like. I like the pencil. Are you <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> I have to take notes. <laughs> What's wrong with the pencil? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here with Eleni from Gather and Stitch Beauty and Gather and Stitch Couture. Yep. Couture. Yep. When brides are getting ready at home in the morning or afternoon or before their wedding, on the wedding day, how long should they allow for hair and makeup? Yep. And do you have any tips around how to structure their getting ready part of their yep. day? Yep. So the morning getting ready timing is like super, super important. It's going to set the timing for the rest of the day. So you really need to get that properly so that the rest of the day isn't delayed. And how you can start is by leaving plenty of time. So don't risk it and be like, you know, I don't want to wake up an hour earlier. I'll, I'll try and push it because that hour is going to just save the rest of your day. So it's better to be ready an hour early than running an hour late, always. I think your hair and makeup artist, whoever you choose, will dictate how much time you need because each people, each person or each team or each company will have a different way of working things and their own timings. Um, so you just have to trust what they give you. Because we're a team and we've got a hair artist and a makeup artist for each event, our timing's obviously going to be a little bit different. We like to finish hair and makeup completely done just as the photographer is arriving. That way any touch-up shots can be done later and we're not rushing when the photographer comes because when the photographer comes they like to use the bride, the bridesmaids, you know, that area and we're not all conflicting and fighting for the same subject matter. After that I would leave at least an hour and a half from when the photographer comes to leaving the house. If you have five bridesmaids, it takes time to get them into the car. You know, someone might get something, they might need to go back home, you might have someone needs to go to the bathroom and all these things take time. Even just walking down the stairs, one person running down is so different to you in your wedding outfit, trying to maneuver everything going downstairs plus five bridesmaids with their bouquets and everything, getting into a limo or a car everything just takes so much longer. So leave plenty of time um, for all those things. Leave plenty of time for photos. Just be ready. Like if you've, if you've got a break, great. You can have some food, you know, just take it easy for a few minutes because as long as that morning is calm, the rest of the day, you can tackle it. But if you rush out, you know, thinking, oh, did I get this, did I get that? You, it's gonna set the rest of the day up. I see that all the time as well. Like there's always brides rushing out the door and parents panicking. Yeah. But then I do see brides who are more organized and I find that they've got time up their sleeve. Like I had a bride last weekend and they were just eating yeah. with their bridesmaids, yeah. had a little time, she yeah. allowed lots of buffer. Yeah. And that was a much more relaxed yeah. looking bride to me. Yeah. Now I wanted to ask you as well, in terms of, so say, say a bride books you for mum and the bridesmaids mm -hmm. and any ladies who are in the house. Yeah. Um, how how should they structure timing with that? Like, should they get ready first? Um, is it going to be a sequence, or are they going to you going to have teams doing multiple people at the same time? Mm -hmm. How do you guys work, and how do you think the best way is to do that? So the way that we work is we've got one person for hair, one person for makeup. So that's happening like at the same time. So we've got hair going on, we've got makeup going on, and we just like get one person done after the other. Again, if we're working in a team, we might have hair prep happening and then might style later. So it really depends on your makeup artist. You know, usually mums, they're quite hard to get and sit in the chair. <laughs> so whenever they're free, even if it's early on or um, somewhere in the middle when they're free, we like to get them done and out just so that they can do the rest of the stuff. Uh, brides are usually somewhere in the middle or somewhere at the start. Very rarely they're at the end, unless it's like a particular reason, like maybe their hair needs to be done later or something like that. Only because we, again, we don't want to rush the bride at the end. It's better to be quicker on a bridesmaid at the end than do the bride at the end and rush them. A lot of factors with the order that people go in, but for us, the way we work is we usually send you timing and a list of who should be ready at what time and when they should arrive and things like that. Always also be particular and strict with everyone arriving and making sure they come on time as well because we've had family members who come like an hour late or something and that will just throw everything off again. If you think about it, and this is a fact, a wedding timeline is a straight line. Yeah. So if one, one family member can push the whole day back, yeah. right, and I see it, um, yeah, one auntie's running late or yeah. someone's off running errands yeah. and 
you guys are waiting around, everyone's waiting around, and that one person is going to push everything back, the car's going to get pushed back, the service is going to get pushed back, and you're going to have less time for photos afterwards in between the wedding and reception or after ceremony. So, yeah, as Helen said, it's crucial to um, make sure everyone's there on time and follow the timeline that the hair and makeup people give you and the photographer. Um, because that's that we know what we're doing and yeah. we've done this hundreds of times hundreds before of times. so so we know what's best for you guys and how much time we need to allow yeah. for every we've seen it all as yeah. well on that point actually um so i know there's like it varies a lot but how long if if you're a bride getting mm -hmm. married how long do, should you allow for just your yeah. hair and makeup depends on the uh, makeup artist and also the look that the bride is after sometimes hair length as well because you know, so if someone's got really long hair, it might take a lot of variables, but usually bridesmaids take almost half the amount of time, if not uh, less. Like sometimes for a bride, it might take an hour to an hour and a half for makeup only, and then a bridesmaid could be 45 minutes. And then they'll sit again for an hour to an hour and a half for hair. But because we've got two people working at once, you're not going to be sitting in one spot for three hours. You'll do with the makeup artist while the hairstylist is doing other people and then you'll swap around. We will do the timing for you according to who you've got happening that day and like our experience and things like that. Same as another makeup artist, they'll do the timing for you. All you have to do is trust that we'll, we'll get it done in that time um, if everyone's running to time. Just to stress that a bride definitely does take longer. That's why price points are different as well. I think sometimes people get confused why a bridesmaid is cheaper than the bride, but yeah, definitely they take much longer. On terms of uh, you setting the timing for yeah. your brides, what kind of information do you want the brides to supply with? Obviously, this many people are mm -hmm. getting it done. Yeah. This, you know, this many people doing hair and makeup. This many, or maybe these many people are doing makeup, and I only need hair for these people, yeah. or whatever format. But aside from that obvious information, what else do you want from your brides so that you can help plan their morning, mm -hmm. their getting ready portion yeah. Yeah. better? We usually like do a trial or something and we do meet with the brides or even if we meet at the trial, what is good to know is like what kind of looks you want for the bridesmaids. Whether it's a makeup look that's like, I trust you, um, this is what they're gonna wear, do something that will complement what I'm gonna have. So that could be all that you need to tell them. Otherwise it could be like, yeah, would like a matte smoky eye, a little bit of shimmer, that's it. Especially for hair, a good picture is is good to have like a reference picture just so like everyone's on the same page as what to expect just an idea of what you would like it, that's just going to quicken time because we sit up we get there set up we ask them what would you like and then we get started so if that process is delayed again yeah and also a good area that's set up properly we usually send instructions on what would make a good setup area for us to lay out all our stuff and get ready. If the lighting is not good or there's not enough table space, then we have to shift it somewhere else and that will might eat up 10 minutes. It seems like such a tiny amount, but when it all adds up later, you don't know what obstacles you might face later. So that 10 minutes could have been really valuable at the end. Definitely the area and how to set up and things like that will impact, yeah, running okay. of the day.